Now let's look at how to evaluate logarithms. Remember always that a log is an exponent. And in this one we're going to evaluate each log expression. Now your calculator will evaluate some logs, but honestly your calculator only knows two bases. If you look, your calculator has one log button it says LOG and another button that says LN. Now we'll talk about LN later, but those are the only two bases your calculator knows. So it can't do log base 2 or log base 7 or anything else. Just the two that it has there, which are very particular bases. Like I said, we're going to uh, talk about later. We're going to learn how to do them mentally. Here is log base 3 of 81. Now remember, a log is an exponent. So you're going to say to yourself, what is the exponent that changes 3 into 81? The exponent that changes 3 into 81. Okay, so sometimes it helps to see it in exponent form. So you know that you're looking for that exponent and I think if you see it in that form, you'll realize it has to be 4. 3 to the 4th is 81. So log base 3 of 81 is 4. And this is how I do it mentally. I, I switch it into this exponential form, and it helps me come up with the right exponent. So here's another one. Log base 2 of 8. In other words, the exponent that changes 2 into 8 or in exponent form, 2 to some power equals 8. Well, that power must be 3, so this log is 3. Okay, and again, log base 5 of 25 is the exponent that changes 5 into 25. So in exponential form, 5 to some power equals 25, that missing power must be 2. So log base 5 of 25 is 2. Okay, remember from earlier in the semester when we talked about rational exponents and we found out that the square root of x is x to the 1 half and for any uh, index we have the exponent will become 1 over that index. So the nth root of x equals x to the 1 over n power. We can use that with logarithms now. So we can work problems like log base 25 of 5. This would be the exponent that changes 25 into 5. Well, we know the square root of 25 is 5, so we need the square root power. And the square root power, you remember, is 1 half. So the log base 25 of 5 is 1 half. In other words, 25 to the 1 half power equals 5. Okay, log base 8 of 2. We're trying to think of 8 to what power equals 2. So in other words, the exponent that changes 8 into 2 would be what number? Well, 8 is the third power of 2. So 8 to the 1 third power is 2. In other words, the third root of 8 is 2. So log base 8 of 2 equals 1 third, or in other words, 8 to the 1 third power equals 2. So now let's remember that negative exponents create a reciprocal. You know from earlier a negative makes uh, an expression flip over or do a reciprocal. Okay, so now log base 3 of 1 ninth means we're looking for the exponent that changes 3 into 1 ninth. In exponent form, 3 to some power equals 1 ninth. Okay, well this power has to do two things. It has to change 3 into 9, and it also has to do a reciprocal. So what power changes 3 to 9? That would be 2. 
what power will do a reciprocal? That would be negative 1. So our log here is negative 2. Negative to do the reciprocal and 2 to change 3 into 9. Here's another one. Log base 2 of 1 8. Well, we're looking for 2 to some power equals 1 8. So I've got to change 2 into 8. That'll take the third power. And I've got to do a reciprocal. That'll take a negative power. So it's going to be negative 3. And here's another. Log base 7 of 1 7. So in exponent form, we can see that we're looking for an exponent that changes 7 into 1 7. Well, since the 7 doesn't change, um, we know that the power has to be 1. And, but it does go through a reciprocal, so it'll need to be negative 1. And here's some more. We're going to get a little more log practice. Let's look at the log base 2 of the fifth root of 2. Now, when you start looking at these radicals, I know it can make your head spin a little bit at first, but if you'll always switch it into exponential form, it'll become very easy. So 2 to some power equals the fifth root of 2. Well, we know that the power that does this has to be 1 fifth because the index of your radical always shows you the bottom of your exponent. So that is simply 1 fifth. And here is the sixth, uh, or log base 6 of the third root of 6. So 6 to some power equals the third root of 6. Well, the only power that could do the third root would be the one-third power. And here's another one. Log base 5 of 1. So again, if you always look at it in exponential form, you cannot go wrong. 5 to what power equals 1? Well, anything to the 0 power equals 1, so this has got to be the 0 power. And here's another one, log base 7 of 7. Well, 7 to some power equals 7. Anything that stays the same has got to be to the first power. And a third one, log base 3 of 1. So again, in exponent form, we see 3 to some power equals 1. That power has got to be 0. And we'll get several more here. I would like for you to pause the video and copy each of these down and try them by yourself before we go through the answers. Okay, log base 25 of 5 equals 1 half because 25 to the 1 half power equals 5. Log base 9 of 1 equals 0, because 9 to the 0 equals 1. Log base 8 of 8 equals 1, because 8 to the first power equals 8. Log base 4 of the fifth root of 4 equals 1 fifth, because 4 to the 1 fifth power equals the fifth root of 4. Log base 6 of 36 equals 2, because 6 to the second power equals 36. Log base 5 of 125 equals 3, because 5 to the third power equals 125. And log base 4 of 16 equals negative 2, because 4 to the negative 2 power equals 1 over 16. Now we're going to look at a special base that is a little different from the others. Log base 10 is called the common log. The reason is logs used to be used for quick multiplication and people would have tables of logs that they would look up and add the two logs together to multiply the two numbers instead of actually multiplying. And think about slide rules. So these logs that people looked up in tables were almost always in base 10. So 10 came to be called the common log, base 10. 
And so let's just practice a little bit. Instead of writing log base 10 of 100, you'll usually see it written as log of 100. But this is the log your calculator knows. This is the base your calculator knows because the button on your calculator just says log and there's no base given. So anytime you see a, a log expression written with no base, you know that that's supposed to be log base 10. Every time you see no base written, you assume it's base 10. And so let's do log of 100. Well, that would equal 2 because 10 to the second power is 100. And log of 1,000, well, 10 to the third power is 1,000, so log of 1,000 is 3. And these are two you can do on your calculator. And, and your calculator can always do logs in base 10. Log of 10, well, 10 to the first power is 10, so that would be 1. Log of 10 is 1. Here's another base for us to look at. It's called the base E. And E is also known as Euler's number. Now, Euler was a famous Swiss mathematician a couple of hundred years ago, and he is the one who attached the label E to this number. And by the way, he's also the one who attached the label pi to 3.14159 that we talk about when we talk about circles. But E is very important in calculus, although we don't really have to worry about what it does, but we're just getting a little introduction to it. So E is called the natural base. It's irrational like pi, and it's approximately 2.718, although there's no need for you to remember that number. Uh, the most important thing is that you know that E is called the natural base and therefore its logarithm is called the natural log. So here I've got log base E of 2 and instead of writing it log base E we'd normally write it as natural log of 2. So this LN here stands for natural log. And I know the initials are backwards. If we're, if we're going to call this natural log, you'd think it would say NL, but it says LN. And remember that a lot of mathematics used to be done in the Latin language, and so these letters are probably backwards for that reason, because a lot of languages put the uh, noun first and then the adjective. And in English, it's different. So we would say natural log, but they would say log natural. So it's come to be called LN. But it still stands for natural log. Okay, so now LN of e to the third just means log base e of e to the third. In other words, what exponent changes e into e to the third? And I have it written here. What exponent changes e into e to the third? Well, clearly, it sounds like kind of a nonsense question because clearly 3 would be the exponent that changes e into e to the third. But that's all it is. Natural log of e to the third is 3. And here's another one. The natural log of e to the seventh. In other words, what exponent changes e into e to the seventh? Well, it would have to be 7. So the natural log of e to the 7th is 7.